So, Father, I ask you today by your Spirit that you would help us. Father, we, we believe that, that you're moving and, and, and doing things. And one of the great things you said, you would build your church. And that means that you're building people. And Father, I, I pray today that you would build us. And Lord, we would be able to look at the circumstances and situations from a different place. A place of victory, a place of, of, of total surrender to you, but knowing, my God, that you have everything in your hand. You own the cattle on a thousand hills. This, this world and, and, the, and the kingdoms all belong to you. And Lord, this is your thing. And we just want to be part of it. And we ask you, Lord, that you would unravel, unravel the wrong things in our thinking that we can see Christ. Amen? A resurrected Christ. See, when, when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, we're born again. As I said, I'm going right back. <laughs> and now, as a part of being born again, I am now in the kingdom of God. I'm a joint heir. I'm seated with Him in heavenly places. This morning, though I'm here right now and you're there right now where you are, you are also seated in heavenly places. And if I can say it like this, that really we're in two places at the same time. And if I can understand that today I am a joint heir with Jesus, I am seated in heavenly places, but here I am down here. And I've got to have this mind in me that that reaches out into the realm of the Spirit knowing who I really am. I'm a child of the Most High God. I'm a child of God, amen? I'm a joint heir with Jesus. In Colossians 1.13, it says that I've been delivered out of the kingdom of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of His Son. When we're born in the natural, in the natural world, we begin to experience and learn about the five natural senses. Just doesn't come, baby just doesn't come out of the womb and say, Hi, Dad, how I'm, hi, Mum, I'm hungry, give me a steak. But they learn about the five natural senses. They learn taste, they learn touch, they learn hearing, smell, and sight. We learn, as a child, we learn to grow into maturity. And I believe that that's where we're at in, as a church. So too with our spiritual growth. Many fail to grow spiritually. In 1 Corinthians 3, 2, uh, Paul said, I wanted to give you meat, but all I could give you was milk because you were still babes and not mature. Many of these people that he was speaking to and wanting to encourage, most of were Christians for years. They'd been born again. They'd been born into a and an amazing move of God, but they never went on with God. Why does this happen? How do these things happen? In Matthew 23, verse 13, it says this. It says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourself, nor do you allow those who are entering or hungry to go in. Let me say it this way. Woe to you pastors and teachers, hypocrites. You shut up the heavens. You shut up the kingdom. You don't go in yourself and you stop those who want to go in. And it's not because they want to. It's, it's, it's because of ignorance. It's not a deliberate thing. It's not something that they really want to do, but it's because of ignorance. And that's why Paul, I believe, really quoted those scriptures. He said that the eyes of your understanding may be opened, that you might know what is this exceeding greatness towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked through Christ when he raised him from the dead. God wants to open our eyes. He wants to open our understanding. The prophetic word this morning, come on up. Come on up and see from where I am. The things of this world would, would not be as dangerous to us 
if we could see through God's eyes. But woe to you. Woe to you. A lot of things are not deliberate, but they're done through ignorance. Jesus and His Word must be our example. Not people. Not failures. We, when I first got saved and I wanted to get water baptized, we had the most beautiful pastor. He was the most wonderful man, loving, kind, just a, a beautiful man. And I, and I wanted to get water baptized. I've told this story many times. But he said, no, I didn't have to because I'd been sprinkled as a baby. It wasn't because he was trying to stop me from entering in. It was because of ignorance or wrong teaching wrong doctrine or whatever it might have been that had surrounded him. Nancy and I ended up going into an Assemblies of God church and getting water baptized. Nancy, who was a Methodist and would not, did not really want to do it, but she came out of the water in the tank uh, speaking in other tongues. I never even heard about it. But that was a journey that we, that we entered on. Some people, they're not deliberately but because of ignorance stop people from going in there's so much fear today in the church there's so much political correctness now in the church there's so much trying not to ruffle the feathers or or upset people we don't want to see manifestations we don't want too much of this or too much of that don't talk in tongues don't do this don't do that then i to say jesus Christ and His Word has to be our example. We've got to follow that. Jesus wants to give us His fullness. He just doesn't want us to have a little dab. He just doesn't want us to have a little experience. He wants to give us His fullness. I want to tell you, friends, the church has got so much more to go into than we could ever imagine or think. God has got so much more that He wants to do. And He will do it through us, I believe. Do you believe that today? God will do it. He will have His way. I know I, know I always say uh, words like uh, go. It means go. But really, it has a deeper meaning when you go into the Greek. It means to enter in. It means to come into. God wants us to go into something. God wants us to... To, 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 to come into something. He wants us to enter into something. Enter in by the blood of the Lamb. You'll enter in by your determination. You'll enter in by your passion. You'll enter in. Passion will drive people. In the natural, it will drive people. I've watched uh, the, the things on television and the news and that when you, with the great things that the Queen does and everything like that, and you've got all these people waiting for the baby to be born and They've got all this regalia on them. They've got about a thousand buttons and they've got, they're, they're dressed in the Union Jack and you know, their passion drives them. They look like idiots, <laughs> but they don't care. They, they just, they're happy. They feel good. It, it feels good to them. Hmm. God wants us to go into something, enter into something. He wants us to enter into His presence. Come into His presence. Salvation is the doorway into the kingdom of God. It's not just getting saved. and It's entering into the kingdom. It's coming into a whole new way of living. And sometimes the old way of living holds us back. God wants us to go into a whole new way of living. John 3.3, 3, it says, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 10.27, it says, My sheep hear my voice. God wants to speak to us. These are not trick scriptures. God literally wants to speak to you. He wants you to hear Him. We are now to be led by the Spirit. We're spirit people. We're people of the Spirit. Jesus has to be our example. In John 14, 12, it says, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. I'm going to go deeper into this later on. You go into the natural and in the spiritual. To grow naturally, to grow spiritually, first you've got to get hungry. You've got to get hungry for God. 
You've got to bust through some stuff. We've got to break through some things. Hungry for God's presence. Hungry for the anointing. Don't listen to the Pharisees. When we first got saved, we got saved in the latter part of, the, of a great, what I believe was a, a great move of God's Spirit. We were so excited. We got saved out of the world, not knowing anything. I went to church because I wanted just to, to please Nancy. Certainly wasn't looking for God, but praise God, He was looking for me. We got born again. And, and when we got born again, something happened on the inside. We, we stepped out of some one kingdom and we stepped into another kingdom. And we got hungry. We got hungry for fellowship. We got hungry for the presence of God. We wanted to learn. We wanted to grow. We just wanted to be around God's kids. But unfortunately, we met some Pharisees, I mean some people. And some Sadducees. You see, that's, you see, they're sad because they don't see. They're sad because they haven't experienced. All they've got is religion. We got so excited and we we're so, so passionate. And we were, I'd say to Nancy in the morning, because I was working early in the morning and late at night, and I'd come home and it was dark, and I'd, the first thing I'd say, the, when I le was leaving in the morning, I said, we're not going anywhere tonight. The first thing I said to Nancy when I got home, what's on? <laughs> she said, well, there's a meeting here and there's a meeting. Oh, that's going to be different. And off we'd go. People would see you and they'd see you excited and you'd start to talk and you'd start to share about Jesus and things like that. And they'd say, ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. It won't last long. It won't last long. We were like you. We were like you, but now we're not. Now we're not. No, 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 no. You just didn't give up. You dried up. I praise God 52 years later. I praise God 52 years later. This fella and this girl are still as on fire for God as we ever were. Hallelujah. I praise God that there's a passion still burning on the inside of us to see a revival fire burn. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Passion. Proof you have passion is pursuit. You won't be put off by obstacles. A woman said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. In worship and praise, give your all to Jesus. Love him with passion. You wonder why I, I want you guys to shout and clap and bang and stomp your feet or whatever it is. I want to tell you this right now. It is not for me. It is for you. Let me say it again. I want you to shout and clap. I don't need you to encourage me. I am already, hallelujah, encouraged. I was encouraged before I got here, and I'll be encouraged when I go home. Hallelujah. I was encouraged in the prayer meeting. I was encouraged there. I was encouraged here. I was encouraged in the shower. I was encouraged. I am encouraged. I don't need you to encourage me. You need to encourage yourself. You need to go have a little stamp on your feet. Have a little shout. Hallelujah. Do you the world of good. Gonna get all excited. Tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jeremiah 29, 13. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. We talked about Zacchaeus the other day in Luke 19, 1 to 3. Passion. This man of passion. I must see who this man is. But I can't see through or above the crowd. I know I'll run uh, and ahead and climb a tree. 
I'll run ahead and climb a tree. Zacchaeus' name means pure, honest. And Jesus walked by. I want to tell you what attracted his attention. And it wasn't a man up a tree. It wasn't some little fella up a tree. I want to tell you what attracted his attention. And I want to tell you what will attract the attention about around your life to Jesus Christ. And that is passion. That is purpose. He, he saw a man sitting up in a tree, but that's not what he saw. He saw passion. We heard this morning that Jesus wants us to see something. He wants us to experience something. He just doesn't want us to have Christianity on your belt. He just doesn't want you to have a bumper sticker to say, honk if you love Jesus. We are not a bunch of geese. We are the power of God. I don't need you to encourage me. You don't have to clap. You don't have to shout. I'll do that. <laughs> oh. Matthew 5 8 says, A pure heart will see God. Here he was up in a tree. And Jesus, Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm going to eat with you tonight. <laughs> I don't know what he sees in us. I don't know what he saw in me. I don't know what he saw. He you would have seen passion. I don't know. He would have seen a, a guy desperately wanting to break free. Wanting somehow or other because God put something in my heart. I don't know why. I don't know why he chose me. I don't know why he did. There were many others that were, had more ability, that had more knowledge, that had more education, that had more money, that had more of everything. But there's one thing that will catch the heart of God, and that's passion. Passion. That's why, friends, when we're worshiping, we're not singing lullabies to God. Those words and those songs, they, 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 I can't say it any other way. But they stir something deep on the inside of me. The songs. That last song we were singing, so wonderful. Only passion will move the heart of God. Are you getting the picture? Are you getting the picture? He just didn't see a more small man in a tree saw passion. He just doesn't see a small church. He sees passion. He's looking for something. In Mark 10, 46 through to 52, I read it the other week about blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus was on the roadside begging. He'd heard about Jesus. He'd heard about this man that did miracles. Friend, today I pray that I can stir something deep in the inside of you, that something would stir, that you'd say, I've got to get to this Jesus. I've got to touch the hem of his garment. I've got, I've got to get to him somehow or other. I've got to break down the strongholds around my mind. Passion opened the door to revelation. He started to cry out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. All around about him told him to be quiet. I've been meditating on this scripture and I pray that you'll, you'll read it because there's so much more, so much more than I've been able to dig up. There's so much more in this. They're not just written there for, for that God just wanted to fill a page of the Bible. They're, they're, they're impacted. They're full of the Holy Ghost. They're full of revelation knowledge. They're full of, full of things and you'll catch something in it and that'll help you to break through some things. You'll, you'll see something in the Scripture there that'll help you to bust through something. And here he is, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. 
And the people around him told him to be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. I was just thinking there, there's a great crowd thronging. There was multitudes of people. I don't think that they were just walking around like this. I would imagine that thousands upon thousands of them would have been yelling at the top of their voice. Jesus, Jesus, pick me, pick me, heal me, here I am. There would have been a great of sound and noise and dust and commotion and people running and people falling over one another. I don't believe for one minute that it was because Bartimaeus was crying out with a loud voice that they told him to shut up. What stirred the crowd around him was that he was saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In other words, what he was saying is, Jesus, the Messiah. Ooh, that would have hit the heart of every demon in hell. Jesus, the Messiah, have mercy upon me. Be quiet. Don't talk like that. Shut up. Jesus is walking through. You see, passion, reality, love, whatever, will reach through the, 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 the crowds, reach through the throng, reach through whatever it might be, and will touch Jesus, that he will stop the woman who said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, the Bible says that there were crowds thronging him, the disciples even said, when he said, who touched me? They said, what are you talking about? Everybody's touching you. But there was something beyond the natural that caught the heart of Jesus. And when it touched the heart of Jesus, virtue immediately flowed out. Friend, today, if you can but touch Jesus in your praise, in your worship, in whatever it is, Virtue will throw from the flow from the throne of God. It will touch you. It will meet you. It will deliver you. It will heal you. It will do whatever it wants to do, whatever you need it to do. Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus responded to the cry of passion. The first thing Bartimaeus did when he heard Jesus, when he heard that the Master's calling you, he stood to his feet and removed his beggar's robe. In reality, he had a revelation that he was healed before he was healed. That robe that he wore was given to him by the magistrates or the authorities or whatever it was, that he was proved to be blind and that robe was his license to sit by the roadside and beg. When he stood up, he removed that thing and he walked up to Jesus. And Jesus said, what can I do for you? And he said that I might receive my sight. And immediately he was made whole and he followed Jesus. Immediately he was made whole and he followed Jesus. Jesus responds to the cry. He was legally blind. That was who he was. But he said, I'm no longer that person. See, when we got saved, that's who I was. But now this is who I am. This is who I am. That's who I was. But now this is who I am. I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm God's king. All of, everything around about him was about to change. Let me say it again. He had a revelation that he was healed 
before he was healed. A person of passion will bury, will burn every bridge behind him in pursuit of that which their heart desperately desires. Finally stood before Jesus and he got what he looked for. See, Christianity is not some flippant thing. See, if God's ab about to do a paradigm change in the church, how many people believe it needs it? Nod your head, you don't have to shout and clap and stand your feet. If there's about to be a paradigm change, things are going to have to shift. It's going to come a shift. It's going to come a shift. Because you see, somewhere along the line, you've got to, you've got to slap the devil up the side of the head. And you may, we're, we're looking at a building. Almost impossible. That many fronts. But then, that in itself was enough. Right? That in, a, in itself was enough. But old hairy legs come up with a new idea. Here I am, I'm saying, I'm believing you, Lord. That's our building, I'm believing you. I'm believing that you're going to do this. I'm believing that you're going to do that. And I, and I drive past that. Every time I go, I drive past that. And I claim it for Jesus. My car knows how to go there now. I just drive past it. I look at it. That's your will. That's our building. That's our building. That's our building. But then I'll hear your legs this morning. I'm there praying and just believing God. And he said, hey, you silly old goat. You're old. You'll die before the lease is up. <laughs> and immediately I said, excuse me, excuse me. People say that I look young and I'm going to take that. <laughs> I'm going to live for another 20 years here. Amen. If Joe can do it, I can do it. <laughs> but you see, hairy legs comes along and messes with you, and your mind is, oh my God, that's right. What happens? How can I do this? What do I? Uh, the people. What? What? What happens if I we get the lease and I die? <laughs> But you've got to stop that. <laughs> Give yourself a slap. Amen? Nancy won't let me die. God says, God means what he says, and he says what he means. Amen? We have taken scripture and come to drawn conclusions that are not scriptural. Because of our beliefs, belief system or our teaching. Just going to go through a couple of things right now. In John 14, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to the Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. I ought to tell you, friend, that verse of Scripture is jam-packed. It has got so much in it that if we really started to study that and understand that, that we would just get rid I'm just going to touch one little bit today, and I pray that you'll get these Scriptures and you'll start to meditate on them and start to look at them. Because you see, Christian world says, you know, these things that I do, you shall do also, and greater works than this shall you do in my name. 
if you do. And, and you know, it's there uh, in the name of Peter. And people are wondering why nothing is happening. Why there's nothing happening. We use the name of Jesus so flippant. The Bible says, lay hands on no one suddenly. Be careful. Be careful. Get the anointing around your life. It's not just flippant. You see, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. Why? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. You catch it? The words in my name, we need to really understand what God is saying here, what the Scriptures are saying. According to Strong's exhausted concordance. In the Old Testament, it means character, honor, and authority. In the New Testament, it means character and authority. So it could be said like this, whatever you ask the Father with Christ-like character, this is a good opportunity to shout, Whatever you ask the Father with Christ-like character, He will do it. Another uh, explanation or something uh, example that's bugged me for years and I couldn't understand why it bugged me so much. But in Matthew 18 verse 20, it says, Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there is he in the midst. And I've heard it, and I've said it, and I've prayed it, and I've done it, and I've said, let every two or three, said God. No. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. Jesus said, I will never ever leave you nor forsake you. So why do we now need two or three? It's like as if the word is contradicting itself, but it's not. Listen to this. No, it says where two or three are gathered together with Christ-like character, there he is in the midst of them with his authority and his power. Oh, that's where the shout. Wherever two or three are gathered with Christ-like character, there am I in the midst with my authority and with my power. This is what God is intending for His church to be. Not a church, a people of babblers, but a peop people of passion that won't be offended by this or that. Because I want to say this, I believe that God is about to bring down signs and wonders and miracles and the church that will blow our natural mind. That will blow us out of the water. And God is seeking for people who will truly, truly go after Him. Where the character of Christ is, you will find the authority of Christ to bring about the will of God that God will be glorified in the Son. You know, friends, God, Jesus wants to glorify His Father through the church. He said, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I want to tell you, He's building a people, a people of passion. I want to read some scriptures to you. There's no room for pride, arrogance, or self-centeredness. In Galatians 5.16. Let me just find it for a second here. 
Galatians 5. Anybody else got it yet? There it is. I'm getting it there. Galatians 5.16. I, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts, uh, lusts after the Spirit. Sorry. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. There is a war going on inside every Christian. What do I say? Walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. There's a war going on. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you want to do. People want to do this for God, but somehow or other they don't do it. I want to come to the prayer meeting, but somehow or other you never make it. I want to go and witness to my neighbor, but you never make it. Why? Because there's a war going on inside you. Just like the devil said, don't, don't even consider that building, because it's, it's stupid for you to even think about it at your age. I want... Amen. It's got nothing to do with age. It's got nothing to do with age. Age is only a number. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, adultery, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresy, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revilers, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, good, uh, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law." And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desire. Your flesh can have a passion and desire as well. If we live in the Spirit, let us, not also, let us also walk in the Spirit. I have a question. A question that we need to ask ourselves right now. Would you bow your heads with me? Will I allow Jesus to reveal himself as he truly is and to do in my or your life what he truly, really desires to do? Will I remove things that hold, will hold me back from serving him, things that will stop me from reaching my destiny, the Word of God says, For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest, that He might destroy the works of Satan. For this purpose, Neil, is on this planet. What is your purpose? What is your purpose? What is your purpose? Next week, I'm going to pray and believe God. I've got a message about entering in, going into the fullness. God has so much more for us. Jesus won back so much more for us. But this morning, I'm going to ask you, this church, I'm going to ask you, number one, did you make yourself available to Him? Not to me. Not to this church. There's only one church. But you see, I believe that God wants to do a number on us. And if we're going to go in, in the last few weeks we've been sharing different concepts and different things, but I believe that something already begun a little time back there, that God was bringing us into something. But you see, to go deeper, it takes a response from you. And you might say to me, Neil, I'm already there. Praise God. I'm not. 
I want to go deeper. I want to go further. I'm scratching the surface. I'm not where I was last year. I'm not where I was the year before that or the year before that. I'm in a different place today. And I pray, I'm not saying this with pride or arrogance, but I pray that that is evident to you. Hear what I'm saying? I pray that is evident to you. And I believe that God wants to take us further and deeper. You know that song we sing, Will You Ride With Me? Will you ride with me? And so, I believe that Jesus is... Can I... Jesus is inviting us to the most exciting, the most exciting phase of your life. He's inviting us to come and ride with Him. Come and rule and reign with Him. Just come up and have a look at His presence. Catch his presence. I want you just to stand to your feet. And this morning, I just want to open this altar. I want to open this altar that we will allow Jesus to come in. I had a saying years ago, and I haven't used it a lot much, but I hear a lot of other people using it. Most of us are like the rest of us. And one of the greatest lies of the devil is he tries to get you to think you're the only person with the problem you have. But you see, we all have problems. We all have weaknesses. We all have a flesh. We all get angry at times. We all think wrong. We all do things that we get ashamed of. But only Jesus can help us. He can help us. And if we're honest and real with Him, I don't want to know what you fight. You don't want to know what I fight. I'm not going to tell you anything. I just need to talk to Jesus about it. I just need to talk to him. I just need to come to him. And so this morning, I'm just going to say, go. Go to him. That means enter in or come into him. And if the Spirit of God is touching you and you want to do that, come out and stand with me. Come out here and stand with me today and let the presence of God just get around our lives. I'm out here on my own. <laughs> you want to join me? Come and join me. Just touch us. Take me. Take me. Take me. Take us. Take us in. Take us in. Take us in. Take us in a little bit closer, Billy. Take us in. Take us in, my God. Take us into your presence. 